So I just want to welcome everyone to another episode of Coffee with the Chiropractor. This is our third episode and we're going to go over and have a conversation with Alicia today. So we have a graduate from the WIAC school. So this is the Welsh Institute of Chiropractors, uh, which is in, it was Cardiff and Morgan, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so you graduated in 2002 and is now running a practice up in Bury near Manchester. Uh, and you, pra- you, you practice with your part- partner in crime, Wendy? Yeah, one of my best friends, Wendy. Yeah. Amazing. Not definitely my partner in crime. Definitely your partner in crime and uh, has now actually published her own book and this was published with Wendy as well wasn't it? Yes. And it's called uh, Yakety Yak Let's Talk Backs which I absolutely 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 love. Uh, So me and Lucia we met uh, through our inner circle our mentoring group and I'm I know I know for a fact that I'm not going to have done her any justice in uh, all of the information that I've just given you there. I know there's going to be tons more information. There's going to be some great gems that come out of this conversation. So I'm just going to hand it over to her to just introduce herself a little bit better. So just come and tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, I'd love to. So I graduated in 2002 from Sunny Wales. And from there, I moved to Scotland. I worked in Glasgow for a year. Um, You'll see, I mean, I'm I'm sure you find this as well. The different places you work in, different patients present with different problems. They come about with different personalities. So it's 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 amazing. I've worked in Wales, we've gone to Scotland. I went to Lincoln, we went to Cheshire. And now I'm back to Lancashire, which is where I'm from. I'm a Lancashire lad. So loving being back in Lancashire. Loving the dry sense of humour, can't get enough of that. Um, and then um, we started our practice in 2006. And so 14 years later, here we are. Uh, Still going. Six chiropractors, four massage therapists and a great team we work with. So loving life at the minute. I absolutely love it, absolutely love it. And so you've got, you, you run a basically an associate based practice. That's right, isn't it? So uh, you're a lot less hands on now, but you've obviously got that uh, what coming up to 20 years of experience working in the chiropractic environment. So obviously your life revolves around chiropractic and the chiropractic message. And so we're just going to kind of get into that in a little bit more detail. So the way I just like to open up uh, the podcast is obviously chiropractic is a very broad profession. Uh, There's a huge spectrum in how chiropractors practice. Uh, so we go from obviously from very MSK, so uh, treating pain and conditions, through to a very wellness-based approach. And so it's always really nice that people share what their chiropractic journey is and actually some of the reasons why you decided to choose chiropractic. Yeah, so for me, um, when I was 12, I went on a rope swing. And as it got to the highest part of the swing, the rope snapped. So I flew through the air, landed on my backside, felt my whole spine go. I was winded, I couldn't speak, and my back was so sore for weeks. At the time, my mum was seeing an osteopath. So my mum was like, this is not right, you can take me to the osteopath. And so my mum took me to the osteopath, and it kind of went from there. I had uh, quite a few visits there. And then when it came to for me to decide which profession I wanted to go into, I knew it was something like osteopathy. And I looked into chiropractic as well and decided I preferred the premise of chiropractic. And I liked the fact that chiropractors took x-rays and analysed x-rays. So I went down the chiropractic route rather than the osteopathy route. Um, but as um, I had treatment or as I was adjusted over the years from the osteopath, there's loads of other symptoms that improved. So my back got better after the initial fall from that tree swing, but I found other symptoms improved. I used to get loads of wrist pain. They settled down, no problem at all. And there's also visceral type complaints that got better as well. So brilliant, just loved it. And I love the hands-on approach. I knew I wanted to, to work with people. So, And this is, you know, this is where a lot of chiropractic, it's funny because it's it's really interesting listening to different people's story and how they basically started in chiropractic because again, there's that broad spectrum. So it's really interesting to see that obviously you started with an osteopath and actually you jumped over because there's a lot of people that don't necessarily know 
uh, what the difference between a uh, chiropractor and osteopath is. And really nowadays, uh, there aren't huge, huge differences depending on the places that you practice. But one of the main differences is obviously, like you say, is the diagnostic imaging. That chiropractors can obviously have that opportunity, especially in the UK, to actually take those x-rays and be able to actually analyze those, uh, which potentially gave you that, that little bit of an edge. So as nice introduction, um, I just want to move on and just ask you a couple of questions. So chiropractors are obviously always trying to take care of, uh, of the health of their patients, but quite often we, 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 we forget that actually the chiropractors are quite good at normally looking after themselves as well. So it'd be really nice to, to just ask you a couple of questions of what, what it is you personally do uh, since obviously your osteopathic journey and like moving on, what is it you actually do to look after yourself? So I'm adjusted every week and that's not because I'm in pain. <laughs> that's not because for those I'm of pain. you that didn't see, we just had an aerial I five over the podcast camera, <laughs> <laughs> a virtual high five. And um, yeah, I'm adjusted every week and that's not because I'm in pain, but it's, it keeps my energy levels up. It keeps my focus. Up. I sleep really well from it, but, but yeah, particularly my focus I find if I'm not just here every week I can't concentrate on things like I'm, I'm, I, need, I know I need to um so I'm just every week I go to the gym three times a week that's I find that really really important again not only from a, a fitness point of view but also a mindset point of view it gets the blood pumping I, I can think a lot better when I've been to the gym and I also drink loads of water loads of water I stay away from caffeine. I'm really lucky because I've never liked coffee. I just can't. I love the smell, but I cannot stand the taste. And um, and I'm not a particular tea fan either. So I drink loads of water. I go to the gym and I'm adjusted every week. Cool. So yeah, basically what you're trying to say is you're, you're taking a very holistic approach uh, in the ways that you, you look after uh, your actual, your, your personal health. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Perfect. Perfect. So obviously we've got a mixture of listeners that are coming through to this podcast. Uh, so we would like for you to actually give us a couple of tips of some things that maybe that you specialize in that you can say, okay, these are some of my like biggest tips that I generally give to either most of my patients or people inquiring with you. Uh, or, you know, someone that just wants a little bit of inspiration as to how they can take the next step in their health journey? Uh, so that's a really interesting question. Um, one of the things, I mean, I know I just touched on it in the previous question, but for me, water's really, really important. It's, your body's made up mostly of water. It's really important you drink in as much as you can. In terms of tea and coffee, with the caffeine they have, it's dehydrating. So actually, the more tea and coffee you drink, the more water you need to drink. And what you can find, so the nerve supply for the stomach comes from the mid part of the back. So if the mid part of the back locks and swells and irritates the nerve, because that nerve goes to the stomach, it can really affect the way the stomach functions. It can cause issues with the stomach. But conversely, if you're drinking a lot of tea and coffee with a lot of caffeine, it can irritate the stomach lining. And that can refer back along the path of the nerve to the mid back and actually affect the way the spine functions. So it's really, really important. You're looking at not, not only how much you're drinking, but what you're drinking. So tea and coffee with the caffeine is dehydrating. Um, then you might start thinking, oh, maybe I should drink decaf tea, decaf coffee. But actually the process of how the coffee or the tea is, is decaffeinated, often involves lots of chemicals. And then if you're drinking those type of drinks, you're putting a lot of chemicals into your body and that's not good either. Um, so if you're wanting to drink decaf type drinks, you wanna be drinking Swiss filtered decaf because the, the process they use is a much more natural process to decaffeinate the drink. And also fizzy drinks. So things like any kind of fizzy drink, if you imagine putting a chicken wing in a glass of Coke overnight and leaving it and coming back to it the next morning and taking that bone out, that bone is really floppy, it's really weak. That's what fizzy drinks do to your bones, they make, they weaken them. So avoid fizzy drinks as much as you can. 
Then if you go on to diet type drinks, so diet Coke, diet Pepsi, whatever it is, diet, any kind of diet stuff, no added sugar, they often add aspartame to it. Now aspartame, the body converts aspartame to formaldehyde in the body and formaldehyde is used to preserve dead bodies. So it's not a good thing to be drinking. So one of my main things is, is water. You want to be drinking loads of water, really limiting your, your caffeine intake and your fizzy drinking intake. Amazing. It's, it's actually interesting. Some of the, the conversation, I actually wrote a article uh, for our newsletters, for our, for, our, for our practice. And actually, interestingly enough, I found a, a research paper about the levels of hydration and the volumes of pain that people actually feel. And actually, uh, I think it's a, like a, a 20 percent reduction in your water content can actually increase pain by something like 50, 60 percent. So uh, those people that have got a lot of dehydration, it can actually start to dehydrate those discs. It can start to oh. affect the way that the chemical processes happen in the, the, the nerve roots. It can start to affect the body's ability to uh, carry out the circulation process and actually carry those nutrients to those tissues that, that are trying to heal. And so, like you say, it's not necessarily about the quantity that you're drinking or the volume of fluid that you're taking into the body. It's about the quality of those fluids yeah. as well. So it's the same as a lot, another drink that a lot of people will go, okay, this is a healthy drink is fruit juice. And it's, it, it, it's, there's so much sugar in it. The isotonic balance of that really actually starts to draw fluids out of certain areas. And again, it's, it's one of those yeah. things that so many, the, the, uh, the the food industry has managed to kind of portray as a healthy food or source and it's yeah. just it's just sugar and well, a little bit of water yeah definitely as, if you imagine as well the brain itself doesn't feel pain so it, it needs water but but dehydration in the in the brain will cause loss of concentration tiredness just brain fog in general so it's really important you're hydrating you're keeping hydrated uh, that's amazing that's amazing as you draw it's, it's great because these are completely different tips to some of the other people that we've spoken to so uh, just moving just moving on a little bit um is a lot of the time uh now that you're you're tw you're 20 years down the well i say 20 years it's 18 years since you graduated right yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's yeah. now 14 years that you've been running your practice? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So a, a lot of the time, uh, we kind of look back and reflect on that process of our development. And for me, obviously, I've only been working as a chiropractor for four years. But if I could go back, there are so many things that as a student, I would go, dude, you just need to, you need to start doing this now, because in five years time, you're going to kick yourself that you're not doing this. So it, now knowing that obviously you've come out of university 18 years ago, if you could go back to when you were a student, and I call this the Terminator question, because Terminator went back in time and, and, and gave himself the opportunity to, to, to tell himself what was gonna happen in the future. But if you could go back 18 years to when you were a student, what would you tell yourself about how you, how you would have developed as a practitioner or how you would have improved your health back then? That's a really interesting question. Um, so I think, yeah, when you start chiropractic college, and I think particularly the way you train at chiropractic college is a, is a very pain-based approach. So you've come in with low back pain, let's address that low back pain, job's done. But actually, if you think about how the body works, so Nothing happens in the body without a signal from the brain running down the spinal cord and out through the nerves. So you might be adjusting the low back and loosening off that area to allow the nervous system to function as it should do, for allow, to allow the brain to communicate better with the low back. But actually those nerves also go to visceral organs. So they go to the bowels, the bladder, they also go down to the knees and the feet. So by adjusting the back, not only can you improve the way the low back functions, but you can improve whatever that nerve supplies. So again, like I said, the knees, the feet, the abdomen, organs, 
you're always better with a spine that functions well than one that doesn't. And I think back then, if I'd have focused more on visceral type complaints, so visceral things tend to be things like headaches or digestive type symptoms. Um, I, I wish I'd have focused more on that as a student than I actually did, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I know exactly what you're saying, because obviously, you know, you studied uh, 18 years ago and obviously the universities were teaching very pain based then. And the thing is, is that we've come another like 14, 15 years down the line when I started it at university and it was even worse. In fact, I think I'm pretty certain now the AECC, the university where I, um, I, st I studied at, was a, is now run by a physiotherapist. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with physiotherapy, uh, and, and that's not what we're, you know, that's not what obviously we're trying to communicate. However, there are some very true principles in chiropractic focused around the way that the brain and the nerves communicate through the spinal column and through the spinal cord and how they can actually start to affect all of these different areas. So like you say, obviously the lower back and how it starts to affect, but what they're obviously teaching you or they're drumming in at school is someone's coming in with back pain, get rid of the back pain, but not necessarily like with your health questionnaires, we've got all of these ticks of I've got high blood pressure, I've got headaches, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. Whereas the only complaint that they're coming in with or the thing they make you focus on was the area of complaint and not necessarily the overall health profile of those of those patients so you basically would have started to actually start looking at the overall health profile a lot earlier on in your career as opposed yeah. to yeah definitely definitely not just not just musculoskeletal type thing but yeah the overall health of somebody and it's you know and the, and the, the reality of that is as well is that that's going to be great for the lower back problem as well yeah yeah exactly that, you know that's the reality of it if you start cleaning up someone's diet you start cleaning up their hydration levels uh, you start cleaning up their movement and their exercise patterns you're going to break down that scar tissue you're going to break down that fibrosis you're going to improve the way that the neuro tracks can start to communicate you're going to improve the way that that person moves and functions so that the brain can start to to actually work the way that it was designed to work and if you'd obviously discovered that then maybe there would have been those people that you let kind of walk away when you could have maybe done that much more service for them, which I think is, a, I think that's a, a pretty beautiful uh, a, a thing to go back and tell yourself. Uh, personally, <laughs> personally, I'm just glad that I, I found the only uh, wellness based tutor at my university when I was studying there who kind of pulled me by the ear and said, Patrick, stop being an idiot and actually think about this stuff. So I was very, <laughs> I was, I was very lucky. Okay. So, I'm aware that obviously uh, time is moving on and I, I, I would like for you to um, maybe give some, some nice parting words of, uh, of wisdom. But before we go through that, um, if someone wanted to find out a little bit more about you, about some of the stuff that maybe that you do, uh, maybe some of the, the training that you teach or the book, the book that you've got published, just tell uh, people a little bit about how maybe they can get in contact with you, some of the other resources that maybe you supply uh, and where they maybe can find that book if they wanted to read that book. Yeah, thank you. So our book's on Amazon. So mm -hmm. um, if you search for Yakety Yak, let's talk back some more or even just plug my name in. It's the most unusual name in the world. That book, I think, will come up. Also, you. Um, can, can you pronounce your last name for, for, for our listeners? Because I don't I didn't, I didn't want to embarrass myself earlier. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. It's Russian. So it's Leon, yeah. yeah. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So, um, yeah, the book's on Amazon. I, our practice website, uh, berrychiro.co.uk, and myself and Wendy, we um, practice, chiropractic practice and massage therapist coaching experts. So we've got a coaching website on Facebook, Leontie F and Davis. Um, but yeah, so there's our website, our books on Amazon and our coaching pages there also. And you said you, that your coaching page is on Facebook as well? Yes, Leontie F and Davis. If, if you can get the spelling, I'll try and make sure that the spelling of your surname is in, in the uh, subheadings and in the uh, explanation when we actually put this podcast up. Okay, oh, so... You. 
I, I will do my best. I'll make sure there's no spelling errors as well. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I've had all connotations from what my surname. <laughs> don't worry. No worries. And so just, just so that we, uh, as we finish off, uh, if you've got some really nice parting words of wisdom, so like maybe a quote that you go by or like a routine or something that someone can implement today uh, that you think uh, will really help serve the listeners on this podcast. It's not so much a quote, but it's more so um, in terms of, we call them chiropractic subluxations. So when an area of the spine locks and it swells and it irritates the nerve, that's what we call a chiropractic subluxation. So subluxations can be caused by um, physical complaint. So physical causes, so slips and falls and jolts, your posture, how you sit, how you work on computers, how you are in the car. But they can also be caused from chemical. They can also be a result of chemical causes. So things that you put on, on or in your body. So on in terms of perfumes, lotions and potions. What type of chemicals are you putting on your skin? Your skin's the biggest organ in your body. Whatever you put on the skin does sink in. It does sink through. So be mindful of what you're putting on your body. What you're putting in your body. So in terms of foods you're eating. And also what you're drinking. I know we talked about hydration um, and water being really important. And then the other cause is actually emotional, an emotional component. So be mindful of, of um, your mindset. So particularly in the last hour before you go to bed, you really want to be reading something positive or watching something positive on TV. Because whatever you do in the hour before you go to bed, your brain will then spend the next eight to ten hours processing. So don't be watching the news just before you go to bed, the doom and the gloom, because you'll then spend the next eight to 10 hours processing that doom and gloom. What doom and gloom does is put the body into, a, a, into fear or an anxiety, an anxious type mode. It puts it into a fight or fight, a fight or flight state of mind. So fight or flight means in years gone by, if we came across a saber toothed tiger, We'd either want to fight it or we'd run away from it. That's a fight or flight mode. In those modes, the body, the body directs blood away from the vital organs to the wrists and the, and the feet so you can run or fight. So what you don't want is while you're sleeping to be in a more of a fight or flight state of mind. It's not a relaxed sleep and you want, you, you want your vital organs to be getting as much blood supply as it should be. So... So before you go to bed, read something positive or watch something positive on TV. Don't be watching the news because you'll spend the next eight to 10 hours then processing that. I love that. I love that. And you're a hundred percent right. It's, um, I believe Joe Dispenza talks a lot about this as well is the, the stuff that you do before you, you go to bed and as you get up, because he talks about, um, the different brain waves. And as you're just about to go into sleep, it goes from, uh, theta, delta, beta waves, uh, gamma waves, and the different stages of uh, of your brain waves as you're entering and exiting sleep. And actually, the two two most important times for learning are just before you go to sleep and as you wake up. That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> they call it they call it the um, oh, the morning miracle or miracle morning. There's a book about it as well. But if you just wake up an hour before, you set your alarm clock an hour before you normally get up. You can get so much done in that first hour in the morning. Nobody else is up. Nobody else is out of bed, particularly if you've got children. Brilliant time just to be getting on and doing stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely, I've always been a six o'clock riser. That's, uh, you, ah. just, you just get so much more done. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious because yeah. my girlfriend my girlfriend will go to bed at the same time and she probably won't be up for at least another two hours after me. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah, you we can know. get so much done. And you start the day in such a great, what a uh, frame of mind feeling like you've already done loads of stuff and you've still got your whole day ahead yeah but still make sure you get in the right, right quantity of sleep all right if you're yeah. only sleeping for four hours don't set your alarm an extra hour early and only have three <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely amazing so thank you so much for joining us today oh uh, it's been a pleasure yeah uh, nerves nerves didn't get the better of you obviously as well but <laughs> we had a no, good thank time you. <laughs> we did we should do it again soon 110 percent. so i just want to say thank you for for coming on and obviously you can find elisa uh, elisa if you if you need to on facebook do you have uh you you have your obviously your berry website do you have like your own youtube channel or anything as well where you put your own information out for your yes we do 
but we've just started that the last few weeks. There you go. Look, and if you want to be, you want to be, if you want to be one of their first subscribers, here you go. Like you can be one of the early, early subscribers, one of the early fans. So I just want to say, <laughs> yeah, I want to say thank you once again, uh, and we'll speak to you again next time with Coffee with the Chiropractor.